welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, a place where I interview tech leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, futurists, technologists, thought leaders, and even the occasional celebrity about how they are leveraging technology to transform their business. This week, I'm recording live from Salt Lake City, Utah, and yesterday we were talking to Qualtrics and about how they've analyzed 2 billion conversations in 16 billion surveys. But there are over 10,000 attendees here, and they're all discussing how technology can turn a customer into a fanatic, an employee into an ambassador, and a product into an obsession. I'd also create those right home, tell everyone you know kind of experiences that we all love in our personal lives. But most of all, how technology can make business more human. But whilst wandering the show floor here, I noticed that Amex are speaking on a panel which is called Transforming Financial Services with XM. Now, Amex set the bar that every company tries to reach when it comes to customer service. But setting the bar is one thing. But how does a global company such as Amex stay ahead of it to make a world-class service that stands out from the crowd? So I managed to drag Lewis from Amex and convince him to have a few words with me for the Tech Talks Daily podcast today, where we're going to be talking about all this and much more. So I want to talk to him about how the customer experience is embedded into the culture at Amex, the technology involved and also try and learn a little bit more about the process defined by transactional surveys and also a financial services company that's been in business for more than 150 years. So buckle up and hold on tight because no matter where you're listening in the world, it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to Salt Lake City, Utah, here at the Qualtrics X4, where Lewis from Amex is going to be sharing his story and a few things that excite him here. So, a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. So, hi, I'm uh, Louis Angel Alon. I work at American Express. I've been there 22 years now. So, I started in risk management. So, I spent my first 10 years in risk and then moved over to the servicing side to build and lead our compliance monitoring program. So, this is the, call, the team that listens to calls for regulatory compliance adherence. Did that for five years, uh, which was really rewarding getting to build some something brand new at a company as, as old and well-established as American Express. And then I moved into the role I've got now seven years ago to lead our customer voice team, which includes our transactional voice of customer survey program, complaint monitoring, as well as we provide enterprise support for all the other survey programs at American Express. Now, American Express has been in the financial services business for more than 150 years. But can you tell me a little bit more about how the business has evolved, especially with the arrival of technology and the, the rise of the experience economy, obviously what we're talking about here today? Yeah, I think what's interesting as I, as I think about this question is what's changed and what's not changed. And I think, you know, at American Express, our customer first principles haven't changed. You know, easy, recognize, solve. Like we want to make it easy for our customers. We want to recognize their relationship across all different parts of American Express. And then, of course, solve. So that hasn't changed. Obviously, what's changed around us is the proliferation of channels that we can interact with our customers and they can interact with us. The scope at which of like what you can do in each channel has expanded. And so as a customer voice team, we want to make sure we're collecting customer feedback across all of those, doing it, being really nimble to make sure that we can respond to customer changes, respond to changes in technology. So I think... You know, as America's Press, we want to be where our customers want to be. We want to be available to them. Um, but we, you know, our principles have stayed the same for years. And, and that's, I think that's a, that's a comfortable balance for me to think like we're being fast and nimble to respond to evolving technology, but who we are and what we stand for is consistent. Love that. And of course, there, there will be many business leaders listening to this conversation all around the world. They'll be thinking, we're not an experienced company. We're different, et cetera. But as I always say, every business is an experienced company now because the last best experience anyone has anywhere becomes that standard expectation for the experience they want anyway. So can you tell me more about the journey that you guys have been on in, in every aspect that you do? So it's, it, there's a couple of things, I think. Like the first is it starts with our company vision statement of to deliver the world's best customer experience every day. And I think what's powerful about that is that's not the servicing organization's vision statement. That's the company's vision statement. So if you're in 
servicing or marketing or real estate or finance, like that's your vision. That's why that's what you're trying to achieve every day. So that that's fantastic to have that from the top top down in the organization. But of course, those are just words. I think what brings it to life is having an experience measurement program that touches all the different parts of the organization. So we measure transactions, we measure journeys, we measure product. Um, and we've been asking for customer feedback for 20 years now. So that consistency of collecting experience feedback um, coupled with a vision that's all about experience. And I think that's what creates culture. And that's what, what makes experience measurement at, and management at American Express so core to who we are because it's part of our vision. We've been doing it for 20 years. So it's, it's indisputable. Like no one's going to ever question it. as like, oh, it's just a fad. It's going to go away. Like it's core to who we are. And I think that's... Um, a really powerful combination that I would assume most companies, you know, could could think about how does that land on on what they do. Yeah, hundred percent with you there. And I also read before you came on the podcast, doing a little research on you, that your approach is not just from a transactional lens, but a journey centric lens. Can you can you expand on what you mean by that? We believe both of those are important, um, and in the service we're delivering customers. So. You know, if you just call the number on the back of your card, we'd call American Express with a question. My organization, my team will send you a survey the next day. And that's really meant to be that transactional survey of how was that particular servicing transaction. That that feedback goes straight to the frontline customer care professional you spoke with. So it goes into their scores. They get the feedback. They see the score. They see the written commentary if there's any. Um, obviously, really important to, to strengthen that connection between the front line and the experiences they're creating. You know, so they can say, here's what I did, here's the, how it landed on the customer, and they can make that connection. But we also manage journeys because we have, while most of our servicing interactions are really that one and done, customer calls to the question, we answer it, and it's, it's taken care of. But we still have journeys that are multi-step, or sometimes there's fulfillment the customer is waiting on. And we know if we're just measuring that touch point, we're going to miss the fulfillment. We're going to miss the end of the journey. So we have a couple key journeys where we measure the, at the end point, like what was the experience like? And that feedback goes mostly to like the process owners, you know, so it's, it's about like, they're the ones who own the process they're the ones who own the journey. So now they can take the feedback and improve it. And I think being able to do both of those is really nice because now you can measure the moments that matter within a journey. You can measure the entire journey and, and paint a complete picture of what we're creating for our customers. So setting the bar is one thing, but how do you stay ahead of it to continue to make that world-class service that differentiator? Because that's, that's the, the hard part, right? You know, the first part is never being satisfied. Again, it's another thing it's, it's easy to say, you know. Um, but what that, the way that we bring that to life is, you know, like goal setting is based on improvement. You know, so, so much of what we do is based on improvement. So that, that's an easy way to bring that never be satisfied to life. The other component of that is looking at, um, there's always pockets of improvement. You know, even when scores are terrific, there's teams, there's products, there's features that aren't scoring as well. So that's where the insights team comes in and will help find like, where are the pockets that you can improve? And then probably the third component of my answer would be like, we're never at steady state. Like customer expectations are always evolving. Products are always evolving. New features are always evolving. So that's another easy way to like continue to be focused on customer experience to say like, Hey, we just launched a new feature. What's the feedback on that? Um, and that's another way to, like I said, ensure that we're not just resting on our laurels and where we're staying focused on how to improve and, and how to, you know, keep driving customer experience at American Express. So uh, I'm curious, what are you most looking forward to here at Qualtrics X4? What have you enjoyed so far? And what will you be thinking about on that plane ride home in a couple of days? Yeah. So, you know, having, I've been in my role seven years now, and I'll, there's two things that I really look forward to when I'm here at the conference. The first is connecting with peers and colleagues that I've met over the years, you know, whether they're like researchers or peers at other companies or Qualtrics itself. So it, that part of that, like being able to be with people, get coffee and connect, that's super rewarding. Um, and then the other part is when I, when I go to breakout sessions and in keynotes, I like to go to ones now that are not maybe directly related to a transactional voice of customer program, which is my my day-to-day -day job. I try to go to breakouts that are tangentially related to like get a different perspective. You know, maybe go to a, you know, I'm in financial services, maybe go to a breakout on um, education or healthcare and really look for those like interesting nuggets and ideas that uh, 
you don't, may not know immediately how you're going to connect it to what you do, but over time, you'll find those opportunities to connect them. So that's part of what, that's the main thing I try to do here is like connect with peers, colleagues, and go to presentations that are not directly related to what I do, but, but tangentially thinking I'm going to definitely get some inspiration in the future. Yeah, it makes a big difference, especially after years of virtual one-on-one meetings. It's, like, it's, it's so different, is it, being on the show floor and breakout sessions? No, it is. It's yeah, and you can just feel the energy as you like you walk through the halls here. You know, I was joking the other day. It feels like the first day of summer camp. You know, like everyone's so excited to be back together. Well, a question I always like to ask my guests at the end of the podcast is: We all, and well, none of us are able to achieve any degree of success without a little help along the way. So, is there a particular person that you're grateful towards? Maybe they saw something in you, invested a bit of time in you. Who would that person be, and why? No, this is such a great question. Thanks for asking. It's it's so nice to be able to like be grateful. Um, and so I would say Beth Lacey is, uh, she's someone who is uh, retired from Amex now, but she was a senior vice president um, who first got me into the servicing organization, promoted me to vice president, gave me my first global role. Um, so she gave me like a ton of opportunity. And I think one of my favorite things I learned from Beth is, actually, I shouldn't say I've learned, I haven't mastered it yet, but I, I aspire to learn it, is she was a master at balancing being really demanding leader and a genuinely caring leader. You know, and I, I think getting that balance is right. Sometimes people who are seen as demanding aren't seen as caring, and, or if you're caring, maybe you're a softy. But like, she was just fantastic at like having super high standards for her team and holding us to them. Um, but at the same time, we all knew she cared about us as, as obviously colleagues and employees, but also as people. Um, and so yeah, so I, I learned a lot from her. I, I'm still trying to master what she, what she was able to master, but but I think like the opportunity she gave me and, and what I've been able to learn from her, I still carry with me um, in like pretty much daily or weekly interaction. I love that. And uh, a beautiful moment to end the podcast on. But be, before I do let you go, for, uh, obviously you've inspired a lot of people here with your presence and the things you're talking about and that journey you've been on with Qualtrics. But for anyone just wanting to find out more information, contact your team, what's the best starting point for everything? So I'm on LinkedIn, so it's, it's easy to find me there. Um, and then for American Express, it's really, we have a, a newsroom on our website, and then it's the socials, you know, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram. And, you know, Amex is always posting things we're doing, either like on the colleague side, on the product side, or on customer side. So those are probably the best ways to stay connected. Awesome. Well, I know you're incredibly busy. You're back to back here. But, uh, well, Nathan, just thank you for sparing a little time with me today. No, thanks very much. This is great. I know you have unique experiences and insights, and I want you to be part of this conversation. And there are many ways that you can contact me. Simply email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. If you would like to slide into my DMs and send me an audio message on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, you can find me at Neil C. Hughes. Every podcast you listen to will have a message from your host telling you to please leave a rating and review. But in a world where we're all ruled by algorithms, it really does help the show reach more listeners. So please, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving us a review. If you or your business need help with business blogs and thought leadership content for your leadership team or you want help launching your own podcast and letting somebody else worry about editing audio files and uploading to Apple Podcasts, etc., you can find out more about how you can work with me by visiting my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. I always like to finish every episode by saying technology works best when it brings people together. And the fact that you tune in every single day further proves that point. So I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. But a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh, 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 o